we're gonna do one of those things where you don't even know when we start recording because yeah, i want to no. be like it's gonna be so natural and like so organic yeah. And We're you edgy and smooth, and you you don't even know where you are right now. You could be you could be on our podcast at any time at any place. You don't even know. Yeah, we're gonna sneak You'd just be up on you. Getting recorded for content. <laughs> well, it, as it turns out, I can't surprise our listeners because they know we're recording because they're listening right now, and we should Welcome. tell them. Welcome. We should tell them. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Two Nosy Meerkats. Is this episode nine? I think it I- is. 100 i don't know time is a construct i yes. i've lost track of all time and space but i'm Which gabby is, jordan brown and i am lucas arnold and like the number nine we uh how many lives a cat has and as smooth as a cat is our guest today he is a fabulous comedian who um uh you will hear more from uh, who's hosting a show at the tiny cupboard i believe uh, uh it's called Dan, your name is in the is in the title. Yeah. I will. Okay, his name. You you will love him if you don't know him already. Give it up for Dan Frank. Thank you so much for having me on. With those so beautiful baby blue eyes and that cute Gorgeous name, eyes. Dan Frank, and the amazing Instagram handle, not Anne Frank. Yes, <laughs> not her. Please, not- uh, before before we begin, Dan, please uh, plug and promote anything you like. Yeah, um, I like you do that at the beginning, Mm. so it doesn't get buried at the end. Um, Exactly. So I've got my show I'm producing coming up at the Tiny Cupboard, like you said. It's titled Dan Frank, uh, a comedy show with Dan Frank, featuring (laughs) Dan Dan Frank. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Dan Frank and friends. Yeah. Well, it's like, I'm not really in it. I'm just hosting it. And um, uh, it's going to feature May Planert, Peter Wong, Chase oh, Shanahan, Calvin Cato, and headlining Jay McBride. Oh, Ooh, the best! Featured on, yes, featured on. She was on the first show that I ever did ever she was the she was the headliner for and now i'm putting her on my show and i'm like you're a headliner again but you're my headliner was it yes fest because i think i saw that yes fest she she was on that one too but no it was uh it was when i lived in albany um she headlined at a brewery i did because that's where she originally started in comedy was in albany yeah that's where um and then she like uh, I didn't meet her until she she like lived in the city at that point when she like moved back. I'm glad she didn't get into Nexium, that Albany cult. <laughs> oh yeah, well that was an, actually that was around where the gig was. That was in Clifton Park. I had a friend who knew someone who was like a step below the the big the head lady. You know the lady. Oh, that? Allison Mack from Smallville. <laughs> I thought you were yeah, about to say they was... weren't good enough for Nexium. <laughs> Yeah, a friend who flunked out of Nexium couldn't get into yeah. the sex cult. <laughs> yeah, she was she was the assistant to Allison Mack. She was like a comedian oh. for a little while. Uh, yeah, and um, when Goodness the whole Nexium thing came out, my friend Grady was like, "Holy shit, that's my friend!" <laughs> like Whoa. in the news. Oh my God. What kind of assistant stuff do you have to do for Allison Mack, though? It's like, can you get her the lotion that she has? Can you put? Can you put girl? Can you put Sarah into block B for today and then put like, yeah. And when we say you... block B, it's a cage. Just like. Yeah. <laughs> like it's literally a block that yeah. she has. It's not just like a square and a scheduling system. It's a, a literal block that she has to be in. <laughs> the way like, Keith Rainier talks is like, we've talked about the vow a couple times before on the podcast, but mm-hmm. the way he talks about like his horrific abuses, he talks about them as if he's on a Zoom conference call. So it's a lot of like, you know, I think the women um, should be branded, but I think before they're branded, um, they should they should ask to be branded. And they, something like, master, it's an honor to be branded by you. Can you, can you write that down, Allison? Mm-hmm. I can write it down. <laughs> or at least he cares about consent. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> He's like, yes, and <laughs> Stockholm Syndrome. He's a yeah. big fan of pushing that into the people so they think potato, it's Potato, potato, am I right? <laughs> yeah. Stockholm consent it sounds it rhymes doesn't it yeah pretty much um is that so you were promoting Dan Frank show with Dan Frank starring Dan Frank is there anything else to promote (laughs) um I see how that would be a difficult show to promote with that without saying my name at first before um (laughs) what am I doing um uh I'm doing well I'm doing a show tonight but like that's not 
this isn't going to come out by before tonight, right? No, I don't no. think so. No, I don't think so. Maisha, um, I don't think so. So please book me, world. If you found me funny already talking about Nexium, and please book me. If for no other reason, because Dan is eye candy and he's and he's pleasing to the oh, eyes, you know. Yeah. yeah, we've got some really hot guests so far. Which we have. Is, it's sad that this is a visual media. Most, I mean, people can go to YouTube and check us out, but uh, yeah. But you know, if you're listening on Spotify, you won't even get yeah. as wet as you should <laughs> because no. you won't even see how exactly. hot we all are. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, switch to YouTube so you could be rock solid for the duration of every episode. That's what I say. <laughs> Yeah, you two are the hottest podcast hosts I've had. Whoa. Oh. Okay. And when the office ladies exist, how dare you? I should also say this is the first podcast I've been on. <laughs> Whoa. So we're so popping your podcast cherry? You're the standard right now, people. <laughs> Oof. We're the that benchmark. Is... <laughs> that is a, that is a, lo- that is a, that, ooh. A low like bar. The podcast world work. has to live up to you, like the Tim Dillon show, Laugh Podcast <laughs> on the Left, Two Dope Queens. Yeah, Joe no, they Rogan have to refers live... to us. <laughs> Joe Rogan. Like, mm-hmm. How do I? How do I grow this? He's like mm, two, two nosy meerkats. That's... Oh God! I have to confess <laughs> something. I had maybe bleep Please. this out. I had a gross sex stream the other day about Joe Rogan. Oh. <gasps> We're not bleeping okay. that out, but okay, I need no, to no, hear no, all just... of it. <laughs> I just want to pause I, uh, and just enjoy how what how juicy this is about to get. I just want to savor this moment. Mm. Okay, now mm, okay, mm. we're ready. We're salivating. Go for it. I Paint didn't, the picture. <laughs> I didn't like it. Okay. I just I didn't I didn't love it, I should say. I liked it in the moment, you know. He was like, you know, uh, you just need like I enjoyed it in the dream, but it was like I don't like that I'm having this right now, but it's happening, mm. you know? It's like, I don't like that I'm attracted to this person, but I am in the dream. Outside of the dream, I'm not. He feels like a grandpa that's trying too hard. Yes, that's true. Yeah, That's his vibe, right? It's funny you true. say that, because all the sex dreams I've had are about people I very much don't like in real life. Like, not only yeah. I'm not attracted to, but like, I dislike very few people, but for some reason, all the people I actively dislike well, not all of them, thank God, but so, like anytime I've had a sex dream, it's been like, for example, there's a girl in college who was like a peripheral member of my friend group. And then uh, one day, like we were all drunk at a party and like, I went up to just like give her a hug because I was being friendly. And she was like, Gabby, I'm sorry, but I'm straight. Like, but it's okay. A lot of Aww. girls probably like you. And I was like floored and taken aback at like the audacity of her because she was probably the one friend in the friend group who I didn't find smoking hot. And I was like, you think you're the one? I'm like the straight girl I'm secretly pining for. Like, this is so stupid. And I was so never attracted to her. And then months later, I had a sex dream about her. And I was like, I am so angry at myself because I don't like this person. I'm not attracted to this person. I think this person is homophobic. And yet I had a, this is the one person who my subconscious fucking matchmaker, you know, fiddler on the roof pairs me with. What if she like incepted the idea of your attraction towards her in your mind? And that's her move is to just go after people she knows aren't attracted to her, but then they months later have sex dreams about her and they think, oh, it must be real. Well, then that, she should also method. invent time travel and like kill baby Hitler. Like she should use yeah. her power for good and not evil because that is the most evil thing you could possibly do. Yeah, that does remind me. I The few times that I have had sex dreams about people, it was, it was very often people I either wasn't attracted to or actively disliked. I remember that happened when I was in college with an Italian professor who I just, I re- frustrated me to no end. And was it, it Mario, was... the plumber <laughs> from the franchise? <laughs> Mario, the plumber, was his Italian teacher. The plumber. Okay. I love the plumber. <laughs> it's Not better the to call Peter my... of Evil and the victor for Peach and nope, he's the plumber. <laughs> Sorry, I'm clearly very classist. <laughs> Was it that fucking plumber you were talking about? That plebe? I'm just imagining like Mario just like whispering sweet nothings into my ear and now like, Lucas, 
why do you always refuse at the bottom? Why? <laughs> <laughs> we're like we're like shitting on a plumber, but like they make like ten thousand, like eighty thousand dollars more a year than us, probably. They, yeah. Plumbers make yeah, like a lot of money, as do oh yeah garbage workers, like any kind of gross job, they pay garbage pretty workers. Well makes so much money my uncle oh, yeah. i had like a, some second cousin that was a garbage worker and he had like a beautiful house and a pension and kids and oh. yeah but he had to no, wake I, up at like what it's like 2 a.m every oh, day Don't no do friend it. of mine from high school her dad was a sanitation worker made a lot of money hated his job though he was very miserable yeah i bet you're yeah. around trash constantly yeah yeah no it, it can't be fun oh like except for mario because yeah he gets to be the victor of peace yeah it's a me, Mario. <laughs> I do not like my job, but my pension is wonderful. Yeah, he's just actually neglecting all of his work to go say a beach and defeat. Just Bowser. eating mushrooms and stomping on, <laughs> on turtles. All They're like Mario. There's a pickup in Bay Ridge at 3 a.m. that you missed. I was a saving peach again. I'm sorry. That was a good turn. That sounds like a euphemism, like uh, saving PG at a wink, 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 wink. <laughs> I can't talk. I was uh, saving Peach with Joe Rogan. <laughs> Double teaming Peach with Joe Rogan. Did oh, he God. in the? Let me ask you, Dan. Did he in the dream? Hmm. Did he like seduce you? Was he like coming up to you? Was he or was it just? Like, no, we oh. went right into it. We were just like classic gay men, and he just like just got right to business with me. Oh. That's hot. I mean, at That's least yeah. he wasn't verbose like he usually is. No, he, he just shut his mouth, and I loved it. I think that's what attracted to me to him at the moment. It's like, oh, I'm kind of attracted to you if you just stop talking every five seconds. I like, can see about that. nothing. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty much the worst. This, this actually reminds me, is, um, is there someone in, like, a celebrity or somewhere in your life where you were very attracted to them? until they open their mouth until you actually heard them speak and you're like oh no i, can't, I couldn't well i did that in um like reverse kind of i think i did that with donald trump jr <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I did, okay so like when you the have RNC, immaculate taste <laughs> oh. <laughs> i did the heart wants what it wants as sarah silverman said you know i <laughs> I I saw um I saw him on the RNC and he grew a beard and I was like fuck he looks good with a beard but then he started talking and everything coming out of his mouth was just horrible and I just wanted to stick my dick in it <laughs> so much quiet down there's a dick in your mouth he's still like let's be racist no focus on the dick at hand stop stop it with your jibber jack I'm like. I'm like, this is for gay rights. <laughs> we were actually just talking about the Trump kids last episode. We were talking about yeah. how I know vaguely Tiffany Trump's ex-boyfriend from like New York circles. And uh, I heard a couple of rumors that- What New York circles do you travel in? Jewish, I know. Jewish, Jewish. Circles, <laughs> Jewish circles of New York. That's what I mean. I mean, from Temple, I think. is The underground <laughs> network. Yeah. The underground Jewish temple where all of the socialites do cocaine, but uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tiffany Trump's ex-boyfriend, uh, apparently he like fucked a couple of girls who like my friend, like friend of, friends of friends knew, and they would be like, yeah, he really likes eating ass. So Tiffany Trump got, we know for a fact that Tiffany Trump got her ass eaten like multiple times. Yeah, and that's why she's so into gay rights. Yes! Oh, oh my god, that video! You cracked the code! <laughs> She she got her oh. butthole licked and just saw the light. She was like, you know what? Love is love. <laughs> <laughs> love is love when you eat the booty like groceries. That's yeah. Like good love point. is make, love. I wonder if that could be like the key to getting through to to anti-gay people, people like Mike Pence. Like I feel okay, he I think he's secretly gay. I think we all agreed that he's like he low key thinks that dicks are delicious. Yeah, but, but who's gonna bite the bullet and lick like Mitch McConnell's butt, you know? Not me. Oh, he's gonna he's gonna die soon. He will die. Oh, yeah. Do you think his, so? His his hand looks like Dumbledore's in the sixth movie, you know? He looks almost as bad as Biden right now. Yeah. He, uh, oh, he looks worse than Biden. Because Biden yeah. was oh, yeah, like he, his 
his hands are like blotted and bruised and shit. You saw that picture of his hands just looking like like they were dead. I didn't know. Also like um the Krabby Patty that killed that one customer, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just like and just I know exactly green. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's what no, his hands I saw. Look like. I saw a video of him uh, when I was like checking for updates on the election. I saw uh, I was watching this news network. I think it was like CNN, and um, then the anchor was like, "Let's cut to oh, Mitch McConnell is speaking, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. Let's see what he has to say right now because the election results just came in." And then it cuts to Mitch McConnell going, "In 1864, the Republican Senate had 80." Seven people and the Democrats had a hundred people. Then in 1932, and then the anchor was like, "Okay, let's cut away and get back to him." <laughs> They're like, "That was a huge mistake." Oh my god! He doesn't know where he is. I think he thinks he's in 1864. <laughs> yeah, I think he thinks he's a history professor right now. In that moment. Oh. Oh, he, he would looks... be terrible as a history professor. I'm almost glad he's in Congress he... wreaking havoc and doing terrible things instead yeah. of. He like... looks like that history professor that you just hate so much. He I was looks about... like some of my professors. Yeah. If I were to do like an impression of like a hist a bad history professor, it would come out like Mitch McConnell, just yeah. turtly and just like oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. just I would just do a lot of that. <laughs> Yeah, you're like, like no watching subject. his breathing, seeing if he's gonna croak or something. Yeah. If he coughs. Do you guys have a worst professor ever, like story or like worst teacher? Like, well, Dan, you are a teacher, right? So you must think about this stuff often. Oh yeah, all the time. I'm like, it's it's the reason I want to get out of education. Sometimes I'm like, am I a bad teacher? Am I fucking this kid's life up? You know. Mm. Um, not like I'm doing anything serious. I'm just like, when you're a teacher, you're sometimes like hyper aware of your words and your actions. You're like, yeah. oh my God, did I say, did I say this too negatively to the kid? Is this gonna like, um, if, if I may, hey, I think this? that's a sign that you're a good teacher, that you're very conscious of how, and you're very self-aware. That's a good yeah. thing. I was it's a say good, yeah, it's a very good, yeah, awareness is a very good quality in a, someone that works with other people. Like you need to be aware yeah. of your actions um to keep but it like but like but like growing up do you remember like a teacher that was like particularly awful and just or particularly yeah. good oh yeah influential oh, yeah. in either direction yeah my my music teachers were super influential hence why i'm a music teacher <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> um that. mr freeburn and mrs freeburn they were a married couple mr oh. mrs. freeburn <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Freeburn ran wind band, and then Mrs. Freeburn, Julie, ran the choir. Um, they were uh, they they provided so much opportunity for the music program, um, and they were just like they're very like their own personalities, you know. So they would be like just real people a lot of the time. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, I had that. I had a history teacher in college who was really uh, great at her job. She was not Mitch McConnell. She, um, she, she made history into like a story that you wanted to listen to. You know, it wasn't just numbers and names. It was like, she would like describe, like she described the Boston massacre once in a way that made me like feel bad for the British officers that shot the people. You know, she, like, <laughs> Like she, I thought she you... got into their feelings, you know, like what they were feeling at the time. She was like, people mm. were throwing buckets of water on them and it was like freezing cold outside and people were cursing at them and yelling at them. And they had guns in their hands and they were like- <laughs> They were like, let's shoot. Cause frankly, I am upset that they threw over so much caffeinated tea. Or wait, Dan, that's a different I, thing. <laughs> really, I didn't have a good Dan, history. I thought you were going to say it inspired you to go out and do a massacre. That's what I thought you were going to say. And then it inspired me to join this thing called QAnon. And then... Yeah. <laughs> More representation for gay school shooters. <laughs> and that's how QAnon. Antifa was born. Yeah. <laughs> Antifa is just gay school shooters. That's the whole vibe. Honestly hot. <laughs> like, I don't think anyone... <laughs> Shoot up representation. <laughs> representation is so important. Oh my god, we got yeah. so canceled for this. No, school shootings are so bad. So bad. Please do not do one. Not you. Uh, just no. Listeners. No. Yeah. Listeners. All the kids listen. So you get high schoolers like tuning into this? Sometimes, yeah. 
Yeah, middle school, high school. Because that's middle who's school on high school, yeah. TikTok following our lovely Lucas Arnold. Yeah. I've tried TikTok a couple times and all I've done is like hold up my I, stuffed animal. I seriously love your videos, Gabby. They're <laughs> so fucking adorable it's literally it's a bunch of them are just her trying out filters and just going "Ooh, my face is looking very squiggly <laughs> <laughs> the filters Ooh. are crazy one of them they stretched really my fun. face like this and i was like i look like mickey o'rourke and <laughs> the wrestler <laughs> oh my gosh yeah no i um wait what Oh, no, I was going to ask uh, Gabby, do you have a, a teacher that was um, really awful or really wonderful? Um, I had one teacher who was, um, I mean, I've had teachers either way that I really liked. I had a professor um, in my sophomore year of college who taught us about like immigration in New York. And he was mm. very like Brooklyn and he like rolled his own, like you'd see him in the uh like off campus just like rolling his own american spirits he lived in like flatbush with his kids he had this like little accent like brooklyn and he just taught in such a way where he just seemed like a chill unassuming guy you'd meet at a bar but he was talking about like russians coming into new york and forming enclaves and i was like i weirdly listened to this all day He's actually writing me a recommendation letter for my uh, <laughs> admission to grad school. He's like such a cool dude. Um, and then, but I've had like a lot of pretty terrible teachers, like as well. Like I feel like I've had because I went to these like prestigious art schools. Like I feel like I had a lot of teachers who just wanted to teach the curriculum of how great they were. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like. Um, that always really upset me about teachers was like, well, I didn't come here to learn that you were in Cats in 1984. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't come here to learn that you played the secretary in Annie for a season on Broadway. Like, good for you. I'm happy about that. But I am 16, so I don't care, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I had that one teacher who... Um, stole camera equipment to make softcore porn and so was fired from the school and then i had another teacher who sent dick pics but not to me so um that's not great either it was a scandal beyond all measure yeah, yeah. i had there was like this guy in college that like i was friends with and then like it turned out he was like soliciting like nudes from like girls at our college like pretending what? to be like a model agent or something oh, yeah my God. He got like, and he was a music ed major too, like a music education major. And he got like shoved away right away from that. It was like crazy. Like I knew him, you know? Yeah, that's nuts. It's nuts when you know that's someone insane. who gets involved in some kind of like, I had a really good friend in high school and we lost touch like in college. And I found out years later that he, not during the time I knew him, but in college, had been accused by like a couple of women of sexual assault and I was like well fuck like I don't know like I felt betrayed because it f it felt like mm. he had a mental break of some sort like during college and it just like yeah. sullied you know obviously it's not about me it's about these you know victims but it just sullied all of these memories that I had with him I'm like I don't know if I can like cherish yeah. this shit anymore it's weird when you know someone who no, does something valid. bad I'm yeah. sure yeah. a lot of people I'm sure a lot of people had the same thing about like Bill Cosby, honestly, because like honestly. So he was his show was extraordinary for so many people, and to have that sullied and have that tainted when it meant so much for you, it, like growing up, that it, it's totally valid that that happened. Yeah, I never had I never had um scandals like that when I was in high school. But my my least favorite teacher when I was in high school, uh, she was a French teacher, and she was 38 because she told us a lot. And she was single, which she told us more. And <laughs> and she and she was she was very uptight in the way that she would speak. Um, uh, j'ai 38 ans et she was a French teacher. Just j'ai 38 ans et je suis. It'd be weird if she wasn't a French teacher and she just spoke like that. Yeah. <laughs> now, oh my. <laughs> she spoke like that in a Midwestern accent yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she looked like she was carved by the same people who made Wallace and Gromit. Like she looked, <laughs> she looked like a Wallace and Gromit character, oh just like big red hair. And 
I remember one time she got really frustrated with one student. It was kind of like disorganized, like he didn't have his notes all put together. And she got a binder and just slammed it on his desk and said, okay, this is a notebook. And I was like, that's a binder. And just, <laughs> <laughs> I was like right next to him. And I got like a big laugh because like, <laughs> because I correctly said- Because you were object. right. Yeah. I always hated that in school when I, Dan, I don't know if you do this, but I, like, I doubt you do because you seem like a good teacher, but when teachers would like correct you, what would be mean to you because you were right about something? Like, mm -hmm. I, I feel like I had a drama teacher who like went on this big rant about how people our age were also stupid and ill-informed and he was like, I bet you guys don't even know who Desi Arnaz from I Love Lucy is. And this girl raised her hand and was like, well, I know who Desi Arnaz is, and he just went, well, you know what, Tessa? A lot of people don't. A lot of people don't know who that is. And then he stormed out of the room. <laughs> he has very bad coping skills. He looked, and, he, and it was weird because he looked like, he looked like Tom Hanks, so it felt like we were, like, receiving an Academy Award winning performance of, like, a crazy person, but it was just... <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, I, I loved I Love Lucy growing up. That was like I think one of my first comic influences was just like their their little shenanigans, you know. They were so mm. brilliant. I sent like once I sent um one episode to my Spanish teacher because we were talking about how like difficult the English language is, and it's this bit where Lucy is um where Desi is trying to read or Ricky. Ricky is trying to read um like English words and he's trying to say like like through and he says uh throff or something because he just said tough and then he calls like bows booges and <laughs> he just keeps like uh oh my god it's just so brilliant uh yeah so yeah. that was my great story that is really good Lucy, everybody <laughs> what are what else were your like comedic influences growing up oh yes this is good I watched a lot. I listened to a lot of Woody Allen growing up. He was like one of my first stand-ups that I listened to. Mm. Um, mm. Until he's another person. I'm like, ah, oh, damn. Why did you have to do that, dude? I know. Sadly, I yeah. felt that way about Louis. I I, I felt that much. Yeah, much I, about I, Louis. I yeah. Same. And it sucks because he would just, you know, these people are like hiding in plain sight because he would like joke yeah. about, you know, these kinds of things, and then he did them. And it was like, ah, oh, fuck, but man it was like he really like inspired me to be a comic and then it's like what do you do with that when you know yeah louis well, was like me, that for me as well yeah it makes you think about like i don't know we don't know the lives of people like socrates or i don't know artists like like uh like we know stuff about picasso and stuff how like he would mm -hmm. like kind of be predatory around like teenage girls sometimes yeah um so we're starting to think of that like more but that's like in sort of recorded history think of like years ago and like i don't know well yeah my anyway. mom said the same thing about uh, da vinci and little boys that he apparently like he had like apprentices and would like he said he would abuse them sexually abuse them and Jesus. that apparently but apparently but she also said that apparently a lot of other artists at the same time did it and so, not to excuse it, but to say like it was widespread, which is crazy to think about. But yeah, I yeah. always said that about Da Vinci. Now, I, now I want to Google just like nice celebrities from the 1600s. There's Danny DeVito and no one else. This just Danny DeVito's been around since the 1400s, just being very. <laughs> That's how it feels. That's very much how it feels. <laughs> yeah. Um, I googled. I try. I literally tried to type in nice celebrities from blank and it came up with the first thing it came up with was nice celebrities who are actually mean <laughs> mr oh, rogers <laughs> 20 Alan. celebrities accused of being mean in real life from the yeah. amazing source of cafe mom entertainment <laughs> did you is see... at the top of that list isn't she oh Alan. yeah Wait, did you see the list? I think it was like a New York City waitress and actor who did a ranking of the best celebrities she's ever served at, oh, um, really? at her restaurant. That was really interesting. Greta Gerwig apparently was really lovely. Greta Gerwig was really lovely. That Frances makes sense McDormand, to me. And Frances McDormand was really fun to serve. 
where uh, apparently she just went straight up to the waitress and said, why don't we have alcohol yet? But in a really fun way. And okay, just, like um, in a quirky way. And that apparently, yeah, in a quirky way, and that like Jake Gyllenhaal was kind of moody and sort of standoffish. Maggie Gyllenhaal said that before? No, Jake Gyllenhaal, Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, okay. So yeah. who was the person before? Uh, the person before, uh, Frances McDormand. She was like, uh, who do you have to blow to get a drink around here? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But like, it's Frances McDormand, so you're like, me, or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, wait, Dan, you were right, Ellen is at the top of the list. Yeah, everyone yeah. always gives her shit, and I'm like, dude, she's like, a, she's 60, like, she's a cranky old lady, of course she's, like, not, like, that nice in real life, like, leave yeah. her alone. Yeah, I kind of, I'm inclined to agree, I, I don't think it's good that Ellen created, like, a toxic work culture, but the irony of it all is, is, like, when that article came out about how terrible the work culture of working Ellen was, it came out on BuzzFeed and people were posting like, oh, wow, this is almost like how it felt working at BuzzFeed. So it's like, hmm, it's almost like this yeah. is a systemic problem and not just a problem with Ellen DeGeneres. I've seen, I've seen a good few of those like um, uh, why I left BuzzFeed videos from like old video producers of theirs. And they said that it was just always all about numbers, just cranking out too many videos that it just got it, yeah. it was just way too much to handle. Yeah, well, it gets Definitely. to, like, a point where it becomes, like, a serious job at some point. It's, like, this isn't, like, like, entertainment does become, like, this corporate thing where people get lost and then they start to get ignored and neglected. Hmm. Um, but I was, like, thinking when, like, that first, like, the thing I really read about that, like, I don't hear much about, but I feel like is, like, the one critical part is that her head writer was accused of, like, so much sexual assault and harassment and she mm. was getting like the brunt of it because her name is on the show and she like hired him, you know. Um, I didn't like, I heard too that like, like about like, I don't know what like the toxic work culture thing entailed. I was like, I was talking with a friend actually who like works in TV or she used to work in like television production. And she was saying like that like, so she's like worked in like the, the grounds of like, she used to like work on like a, a reality show and this like crate like a sort of like a Maury like show mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and one of the guys that was like one of the crazy people that they would have to like interview like followed her home like several times all the way to Westchester from like the meatpacking district and would like stalk her and oh stuff. Oh my god. Oh my god. And she was like I'll take Ellen's workspace over that. Jesus. Yeah because Ellen's workspace honestly sounds to me like any corporate just in a way of, you can rationalize yeah. it's, it's it like, sucks but the it's not sexual assault is beyond but yeah, like so everything yeah. else that was complained about with ellen was like i mean it's all bad but it's like everything it just feels like these people who work at ellen are all the kind of people who like say they get 500 emails a day so they can't respond to your email you know yeah i'm like yeah. also thinking like isn't like I feel like this was the same work culture at like, I don't know, with Johnny Carson or Leno or Letterman. Yeah. They all probably, like I'm sure Letterman has thrown coffee at a few interns, you know, <laughs> or like. I just imagine him yeah. doing that. And honestly, I don't think it's okay to throw coffee at people, but it's a really cute image in my head of him being like, oh, damn it, intern, like, oh, <laughs> I'm David Letterman and you insulted me. <laughs> it's also, I've never seen his face contort, so I would imagine he would just do it with like the most pacified face, just like, what are you kidding? You're just, huh? Hey. Like he would just do it with this <laughs> very sort of plain face. This Americano is not what I uh, have in mind. Yeah, but just Where the hell it. are my purple M&Ms? Just... I'm just like, why aren't you investigating those ones also? Like, I'm sure, like, Johnny Carson probably threw staplers at people back yeah. in the 80s. Yeah. Back in the 70s and 80s when, like, there was, like, no work regulations or, like, respect yeah. for anything. Yeah, oh my god, yeah, you could just poop on an intern and it was like well it's a pleasure to be here it's an honor to be branded by you master <laughs> yeah people are comparing ellen to like uh like guantanamo bay or something and it's like how about we like like be consistent in the anger towards yes. like, like yes. you're saying like buzzfeed or something you know i'm sure that's a terrible mm. place to work sometimes <laughs> i'm sure it is it's like why yeah we just have to dismantle like all toxic workplace shit i feel like i just yeah. 
worked in so many offices where it's like, oh, this person didn't get the rate. I worked, I worked, I was a production assistant at this one office where there was a woman who like, she like ordered a lot of sushi every day and she would be like, I need that sauce I like. We never knew what, she always thought that this restaurant she had, like, had this super secret sauce. And then one day, like, we put, like, some sushi on her desk and she she looks at it. She goes, yes, that's it. That's the sauce. It's tempura sauce. They have it at every single restaurant. But this woman just wanted to feel so special. Like, she had a secret sauce and she would get so mad at all the interns and the office manager for like not having her one specific sauce because she oh just couldn't God. deign to realize that it was tempura sauce. Because no one has time. We're all we're all on our emails and like, oh, yeah. I have to get on this call. It's like busyness culture that like allows for the fucking, you know, shitting on interns and production assistants and assistants. And it's crazy. Yeah. That reminds me. That reminds me. I think that a big thing of that is like is wanting to have the image of being difficult to work with. Just oh, being yeah. like this sort of like this, this like very cerebral artist who like needs perfect, like just having the image of Like that. Meryl Streep and the Devil Wears yeah. Prada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also in the original producer's movie, Zero Mostel, who um, played like, um, what's his face? Not Leo Bloom, but the other one, the big fat one. Um, what was his name? Oh my God. Max what? Bialystok, yes, that's it, Max yes. Bialystok. And that the actor who played him, Zero Mostel, I think he was injured or something. Something was wrong with his foot or some sort of physical injury. And that there was like a PA who was sent into his dressing room just to basically say, please, just one more hour of shooting. We just, we really need to finish this. Um, and we need to finish this scene. And he said that Zero Mostel looked like he had just eaten a parrot, just like, just like very much like that. And then he was like, please, can we just get one more hour out of you? And Zero Mostel said, let me yell at you for 10 minutes just to <laughs> just so i could just so we can be overheard by the rest of the crew and then i'll go out i just I, let me yell at you and he was like okay and he just like yelled hellfire at him and then he went out and finished the scene it was great but he just he wanted to be difficult he wanted to yeah. get that just that delicious sort of like you're on my time you know and it's funny because, like, people talk about the Devil Wears Prada retroactively and they're like, you know, like, I actually think the boyfriend is the villain of the movie. It's like, well, actually, like, he wasn't great, but Meryl Streep is kind of the villain of that movie. Like, hmm. it's not reasonable for, you know, the boyfriend to be like, I understand that you have a demanding job, but I hate you for liking clothes now. It's also unreasonable for the Anna Wintour character that Meryl Streep plays to be like, get me the eighth Harry Potter manuscript that doesn't exist or I'll fire you. If I was in that position, I would literally be like, no. And I would leave the job and get (laughs) another job because it's stupid and fucked up. So we have this crazy retroactive reading of this movie that's like, actually like, Anna Wintour is fine and work culture like this is great and you know, Anne yeah. Hathaway's character was just motivated. Not really. Everyone was kind of bad in that movie. That's like, th- many things can be true at once. I've just been thinking that about like, um, you know, The Office. Do you guys watch The Office? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been thinking that about Jim Talbert. Yes. Like, mm. I, like he was the hero originally. Now I'm like, N- Jim kind of sucks. Like in Yeah, he respect. just pranks. Mm. You know, when people say on Hinge or whatever, I want to be the gym to your Pam, what they mean is they want to be the two people in the world who laugh at everyone crazy around them. And in a way, that's fine. But also, Jim, like, it's, like, not okay to prank your maybe autistic coworker all the time. <laughs> Am I wrong? You described Dwight as possibly <laughs> autistic. If I worked in an office with Dwight, I would be like, okay, well, he has some social prop. Like, I would be a little more. Be like, he grew up in an incredibly religious household. That would be my take. <laughs> like, I'm not, we've all had Dwight's as coworkers, and we don't act the way yeah. Jim acts. Around. Jim is like, this person is not worthy of my time, respect, or decency. I would be like, yeah. well, there's something off about this guy, but I'm just going to clock out at five and live the rest <laughs> of my life. Playing dead, playing devil's advocate, I do remember in season one how like Dwight was like 
a very big irritant on Jim that he had like had to yeah. have because they had like neighboring desks and they had to have he had to have things done a certain way. He was always he was and just very irritating to Jim. And so initially it was retaliation, but then it just became attack, attack, attack from Jim. Yeah, it became so, like jokes after a while because everyone because yeah. the audience loved that. So they were like, let's yeah. do more of that. Let's write more of that in. But yeah. I was like thinking more of like, you know, like his relationship with Pam too was like, like he bought Pam a house, which is like, that's like, at first that sounds cool, but I'm like, oh my God, if my significant other bought a house without talking about it with me. Oh my God. Like, yeah. that's that would, an yeah. enormous investment. A mortgage? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Here's this thing for you to pay off. You're yeah. welcome. <laughs> That's like, and then... Hey, honey, like, I got you something. Debt. <laughs> and then originally their whole relationship was based on, like, she was the only great thing in his life because the only other thing he had in his life was his job. And he hated his job. That's why he was pranking Dwight all the time because he was so bored. And then when he got another job that he liked, he started to ignore Pam more and started to, like, take out his frustrations on her, which I know happens in, like, a marriage and stuff. But, like, it's just like, oh, she was kind of just, like, your escape almost from your work. And now, mm. like, she's, she, you don't need an escape anymore, it feels like, you know? Yeah. It's on. It's it's unhealth. No, I understand what you're saying. Like, it's not yeah. a depiction of a of a healthy uh, relationship yeah. necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, it's changing. I guess their relationship changed after, which happens. But it was yeah. just like, oh, he's not perfect. You know, like everyone makes him out to be like, like, oh, I need a gym or something. But like, he's not like, you know, the greatest guy. Yeah. Ever. He's a human. Yeah. I that uh, did remind me when I was in college. I did have someone who was very much like Andy. I work when I was in college, I worked in the university bookstore and there was a dude, I remember he would bring like a microwavable lunch every day and I would ask him sometimes, I was like, hey, how you doing? He'd be like, living the dream, man, living the dream, doing great, man, doing awesome. Like he was, he was just always trying to psych himself up and you could hear it. And I was just like, oh, you are broken inside, you poor thing. <laughs> oh, that made me so Aww. sad. <laughs> I know. Living the dream. Living the dream, man. Living the dream. Living the dream, man. Living the dream. Like I'm literally living in a dream because my life is so broken. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm not in reality anymore. I'm dissociated I know. right now. Wait, speaking of dreams, I did want to. I texted yes. Lucas today. I said I had the craziest dream. It was like Dan, a combination of all of my anxieties, but in such a weird way. I had this dream where I was booked on this comedy show. And it, no, sorry, it was an open mic, but it was in a huge, like Broadway style, like large venue. And there were two comics who introduced me and they happened to be like the only two comics in the world who I don't like as people. And they, <laughs> put, no. they put music, like they like introduced me with music. And then when I went on, they didn't stop the music. So they let the music oh keep going. <laughs> But in my dream, I thought what I'll do instead of trying to do stand up is I'll make this like an improv scene with four people that takes place in a boat. But it just completely, what? yeah, I bought like a canoe on stage because I guess you the song. You created a scenario. <laughs> oh my God. The song reminded me of like Maritime. So I was like, I'm going to work with this <laughs> if these bitches won't turn the music off. And then I got in this boat and started doing improv and it really bombed. But I was, <laughs> and then I left the venue and I was in a bathing suit. And then I was like walking around like the Union Square area, which is kind of where I used to work. And it's also close to where my parents live. And my friend was like, um, hey, why don't you come work a shift at your old job? And I was like, oh, okay, but I need a change of clothes and I can't go to my mom's house because she has COVID, which she actually does. So like, I guess COVID existed in the dream, but clearly not enough that it mattered that like we were all unmasked at a big venue. Right. Um, and my friend was like, it's fine, just come in your bathing suit. So then I went to work a shift at my job, but my job took place at a Subway sandwich shop that was closed. <laughs> It was a Subway sandwiches and we were around a big like table all with our laptops and no one was coming in but there were still like sandwiches being made in the back and I just had to work 
a shift at my job. And also it was my old office manager who I like, who like didn't like me by the end. And we, so he was giving me the least amount of work of everyone else. So I was just sitting cold in my bathing suit at a Subway sandwich, working on a laptop (laughs) on Slack. And I woke up being like, okay, that was weird. But also that was a nightmare. (laughs) Yeah. up on me. That That is like something you look at later and you're like, that was traumatic, that (laughs) whole dream. Yeah, it was weird because usually when you have a nightmare, you wake up, your heart's pounding, you're like, holy shit, that was so scary. And then you like think about it later, you're like, oh, that was kind Mm. of funny. But for me, it was the opposite. I'm in the dream being like, this is pretty funny. And I woke up being like, no, this is terrifying. This is all of my anxieties combined into one. My God. How does it feel, though, knowing that you were able to work with the music in your dream, that even in your dreams, you still have impeccable yes-and skills? That, I like, actually was terrified, because I was like, wow, I'm literally doing improv in a nightmare. That's supposed <laughs> to show you the place improv occupies in my life now. Oh my it's like God. your coping mechanism. Like, your, your body, it's like your, your body's coping. It's like, we're in danger. We're doing, we're creating a scenario. It's now. literally the raft that keeps me afloat. <laughs> what an image. Like that oh physically God. manifested in your dream. Did it live up to that expectations, is... Lucas? That was, it, here's the thing. I, I thought that it was going to be something much more dramatic and crazy, but this was just so specific and such this, every little issue that happened was so small, and, but it was insidious. It got in my heart. It oh, was, you know, yeah. and I didn't have a mic in the in the. Um, I oh was before I started doing the improv scene in the boat. I was like, maybe I can incorporate some stand up in, but then no one could hear me because I was unmiked and the music would stop playing. <laughs> It would be great if you. All right, everyone, get in the boat, and then you were like, "So dating is weird." <laughs> yeah, they're like, "What is that woman in a boat saying?" <laughs> There's no water. If they were trying to yes and me, like, I was like, so I was walking down the street the other day, and they were like, I was walking down the street, too. I'm not finished. This is my bit. I'm not done. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I, just, I think, wait, what? Oh, no, I was, go- I was going to say that I, um, I, I was doing a bit at a show recently um, where I was thrown up for a, a few minutes because a comedian was late, and so the host was like, can you go up? I was like, sure. Um, and I was doing a bit about how I don't think I look like I've done any drugs in my life. And then I, and then I, but in the bit, I'm, I'm talking about a dialogue I had with someone in which I said, and so I asked, and so I said, hey, what drugs does it look like I've done? And someone in the audience thought that I was speaking to him and he was like, cocaine. And it was just, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I love your enthusiasm, but I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> I could see you being like, you know, like uh, working on Wall Street. You're like this guy's like this banker's assistant, and they, yeah, you're at, the, you're at the party, and they invite you into the bathroom. You're like, come on, we got we got some snow in here, and you're like, what what are you fucking talking about? It's snow. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's Am exactly I getting how a I would. <laughs> They're like, come on, Lucas Arnold, do a <laughs> do a bump with us. <laughs> That's like in How I Met Your Mother when I forget who it was, but one of the characters has to smoke cigarettes to keep his job because his boss smokes and he wants to bond with his boss over cigarettes. <laughs> it's like that. I remember that being in Friends. I remember that being a thing in Friends. I think where like Rachel is like at a new job and she doesn't smoke, but everyone else does. She's like, I could have a cigarette. And then, and then she does it. She gets addicted. That's oh. a thing in Frasier too. Just every no- that's like a bit in Frasier. Every uh, I think that's just like a classic sitcom yeah. bit. Maybe maybe cigarettes yeah. are just really addictive and uh, yeah, <laughs> people just like them and that's why they're and in peer shows. pressure just works. Yeah, yeah, and and they probably got paid by some kind of cigarette company or lobbyist to put that <laughs> into the. Oh yeah, you know the big Philip Morris sitcom monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> Is Philip Morris still around? Did they like? change their name or something or did they i kind of feel like they're still around let me see philip morris i don't know what philip morris is i'm gonna be it's a cigarette brand from like from like your grandpa's tv you know okay it was like it was like uh i'm gonna be honest it might be my dad's tv if we're if we're if we're (laughs) talking about because he's 76 
Oh yeah, my dad's my dad's seventy, and um, once like we went to the there's, there's like this museum somewhere in New York. It's like the Museum of the History of Television or something, and we went to mm. it to watch his the TV shows that he grew up with, like Rin Tin Tin, and this very racist one called Kingfish, and. <laughs> The, the commercials in the middle were like all these were about like Philip Morris cigarettes and they'd be like good for the smoke good for the smoker and that was the the hook each time oh so. well I mean I, I just looked it up Philip Morris is still around um I think that they just can't advertise cigarette companies anymore they just have to make yeah. them look like cigarette like brands are just like really cool and right. they just show like models smoking them because everything mm. else, it's like, you know, in Mad Men, it's like a Lucky Strike advertises as Toasted's because every other company advertises as Toxic. Because it was around the time where, like, they had to first start putting labels that, like, cigarettes are dangerous and they couldn't sell them anymore. So they had to pivot. Um, yeah. So I don't know if Philip Morris would be like, we are a factory that loves to sell you cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> we are a factory. <laughs> Philip Morris, we are a factory. <laughs> Chiquita Banana, we are a factory. <laughs> that grows things that we want to give you, sell to you. <laughs> Apple iPhones made in a factory. <laughs> in a country. Just <laughs> <laughs> in, in an Asian country. Yeah. Every day, oh. we work hard, 18-hour shifts. <laughs> With our brightest 10 year old minds. <laughs> no health care, even though we could use it the most, probably. <laughs> oh, God. They put a positive spin on it. They're like, do we need health care? No, because we've got our Heart. hard work, heart, <laughs> ingenuity, and absolutely no pensions. <laughs> <laughs> we use the most. We do the most work with our short-lived lives. That we, have. <laughs> we pack a year's, like, years and years worth of work into just, you know, 10 years before the end. You know? The American dream. Ah! I, like, I like the idea that there's, like, a, a hand-stitched sign in every worker's home that says, we are a factory. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, like, the first thing they see every day. It's like what the wine moms have, like, live, laugh, love. Yeah, we yeah. are a factory. But a really <laughs> floral writing. Dance like no one's watching. We are a factory. Dance. Dance while you work. Just don't lose a thumb. Because <laughs> that's like, what, $10,000, 20000 <laughs> They write the whole insurance policy, but in like papyrus font on like one of those yeah, Oh my god. Gabby, if we ever do t-shirts, I think We Are a Factory has got to be like one of our... <laughs> Two nosy meerkats. We are a factory. We are. <laughs> if you think we ever take a break from podcasting 24 hours a day, you're wrong. That's yeah. not the American dream. <laughs> Ellen Show, We Are a Factory. <laughs> the Ellen Show is 100% a factory. Oh my god. You brought it full circle. That was beautiful. I just wanted Ellen. Did you guys see Ellen's like apology monologue? Um, no, I I, I did. didn't. It was like so. First of all, it was an all virtual audience, and it was really weird because it was Ooh. like little TV screens in front of Ellen showing people's faces just up to the camera like this, like <laughs> just like ha ha ha, and then. <laughs> Like in their separate bedroom and then Ellen does this monologue that's like you know all these allegations came out about me like look I'm a good actress like I played straight before but I'm not that good an actress like you've seen the real me this is me and uh, I'm working on myself it was really like heartfelt but I would prefer if she had just been like listen I just want to set the record straight like everything you've heard about us it's actually worse like we <laughs> I wanted to be like, listen, I have $500 million. I'm never going to change. I'm better than you. I'm like, do you think that's not going to change my brain, people? Like, I'm on a different plane than you. I have $500 million. Yeah. I, I want to address these allegations about me. Um, have you ever had your pool heated for you by like 15 <laughs> pool boys at once? Um, okay, that definitely changes your ability for empathy. I'm not getting better. 
Have you ever I had would so much money? I would respect her if she did that. <laughs> Wait, Dan, what were you saying? Wait, Dan, I'm sorry. I interrupted you. That was my No, fault. no, I think we... Classic was... straight man. I'm sorry. I'm just... I'm, I'm a very canceled, impressive force. Canceled, 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 canceled. canceled. I'm, I'm literally just a step away from being Lucas. Just a step. <laughs> one step. Just, just one degree, yeah. <laughs> yeah, one dick How away. does it feel, Dan, to be close to this? Yeah. It feels... Uh, you know, like I can't do anything about it, but um, <laughs> you were born this way, born almost straight. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Lady Gaga was right, isn't was she always this born this way? Yeah, um, Dan, are you like dating in quarantine? Are you like dating anyone? Or what's I just came back from a date, humble brag, ah! just today. Yeah, I just I went on one, I went on a lunch date, it was really great. I really liked him. Oh, that's awesome. How did you guys meet? Like on the apps. Yeah, we we started talking like in August on um, on Grinder, and then he like disappeared from Grinder, and then he came back, <laughs> and then he started following me on Instagram, and he started like liking all the things I was doing on my stories, and then we just started talking more, and um, then we decided to go on a lunch date today, and then he gave me his number afterwards. Aww. That's so good. I really yeah. appreciate that. And I appreciate, and I know people use Grinder for more than hookups, but I appreciate like evidence of that. Because I hear so yeah. many horror stories about just like, show me a pic of your butt or like I just block <laughs> your, you. I horror stories. Someone wants to see my butt? How dare they? I, I don't mean that's the, the horrible story. I mean like, Oh my it's god, like, I it's what? like mo I, I I just hear so many horror stories that it's all just like monosyllabic. Like hey, Yeah. But Yeah, oh my god. That that yeah, yeah, that is it. I got a I got a dick pic the other day and I was like, dude, why do you have to be like that? And he was like, What? Hung? <laughs> and, <laughs> it was kind of funny. I'm not gonna lie. That is really funny. <laughs> and then I was like, No, why do you have to be insecure? <laughs> and then he was like you're dumb you don't this is a sex app you don't know what to do with it and i was like no you're dumb your dick is dumb you took your your pictures are dumb and he's like your pictures lack luster in your life he says <laughs> my pictures lack luster now my pictures are like i can't put it up here because i'm zooming on my phone but like yeah. my pictures are like i got like a good headshot there's one of me fishing with my friends Fishing. That's, that's that's very fun. straight. I'm a be provider. A, yeah, it's, it's a straight fun, thing. Though. Yeah, <laughs> it is it's fun. Yeah. Fun. And all his pit, and then there's me doing stand up in a few pictures. So I'm like, I'm dressed in like a suit and tie and stuff. Hot. All his pictures are in awesome. his bed. Like Ooh. everyone has. He doesn't one even of those. go anywhere. He doesn't even no. go past the bed. The dick pic was taken in a bathroom stall. Oh. In a, I saw oh. Two Not even in his own toilet. bathroom. Yeah, I was like, why you're telling me mine lack luster? Yours are in a public bathroom stall. Like I see the two rolls of toilet paper in the wall. <laughs> like inside. Oh my God. I was like, did you fuck a homeless person before you took this? Oh God. Man. What if the homeless person was the photographer? Just <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, while I'm here, you you got a great <laughs> dick. It's hung. I'll just I just like that he said lack luster. Your lack photos. As That's such a good word. <laughs> it's like photos can lack. It's like some photos have luster and other photos don't have luster. And your photos yeah. don't have luster. It's yeah. So, Yours don't adjective. have any. I just, I called him a sex offender and then he blocked yeah. me, which means uh, I win. Yeah. It does mean you win. Yeah, getting Grand. blocked is the way to win. <laughs> yes. I do is a game. I do have a question. So besides the lovely gentleman who you saw today, and it seems to be going well. So in so before this guy, what are some moves of guys hitting on you that were the most successful? How does one woo Dan Frank? Mm, good question. Um, uh, you know, like what moves you mean, like like talking wise, like hitting or like yeah. physical or maybe a first message or if you met someone in person, something they would say, whatever is something, an introductory thing that someone did that really worked on you that you were like, oh, I like this person. Um, I like when they talk about like, you know, like their family or like their um, 
just themselves as a person rather than like you know trying to get right into like views and stuff mm. like i like to know like them as a as an individual and then if they start to like like make like physical moves like with their like hand holding or like like uh going in for like a kiss or something they like start to ask like is this okay things like that i'm like i'm like that weird like person like you know what's cool consent <laughs> yeah well consent is cool taking it slow <laughs> Hang Mo loose. moving with grace and empathy fuck yeah <laughs> Leaving room for the Holy Spirit. You are a walking VHS tape right now. Yeah, I feel like a VHS tape a lot. Oh my God. Those are really sweet. I like those. That, oh, that is sweet. It just reminded me, have you ever seen that list of like ways to say no to sex or like ways to say no to drugs? No. It's like a list of, I have to pull it up. It's a list of like 120 ways you can say no. And they range from like, I don't want to get pregnant. It's very heteronormative. It's like, I don't want to get pregnant to like, what would my aunt think? Like, sh that's just stupid be, shit. Like that's, that. Those are both going to be my excuse next time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to like, get pregnant. What would my aunt think? I'm going to say that over grinder. I'm going to be like, what What would my aunt think? <laughs> Side of marriage. <laughs> that, I'm going to send that to that dick thing. I'm going to be like, what would my aunt think? <laughs> I hope you unblock me so that I can be like. <laughs> um, what would my aunt Joanne think if we had sex? God. <laughs> Obviously, I'm gonna tell her. I'm not gonna be yeah, like. Yeah, often I was just thinking that. Like, of course, I would tell her. Like. <laughs> and your aunt is just like, please stop telling me about all the dick you're getting. Please Wait, stop. <laughs> I just found a quirky <laughs> list. This was actually different oh. from the list I was originally thinking of. Okay, but it's okay, a okay. list of ways to say no, and I feel like it's something, like, I came up with, like, really stoned or something when I was being as corny as possible. It's like, sorry, I can't. I have to walk my unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> this is, like, something middle school me would say. In this world, there are countless <laughs> of cool things to do. Countless of cool things. Unfortunately, your idea does not fall into that category. God, these are some gay answers. <laughs> There's one that's just, that's such a funny joke. Ha ha ha. Wait, so wait, what, these are That's examples of what? Of how these to are say examples no of how to say no to not just sex, like anything. <laughs> <laughs> I can't today. Sorry. These are real. This is from a website called pairedlife.com. I can't today. Sorry. My brother's friend's pet lizard just died. And yeah, it was tragic. <laughs> Just say, okay, this is where I'm like, just be like, no, I can't. <laughs> There's no reason to do this. Oh, oh my God. God. That happened to, uh, to a friend of mine once. Like a, a date was like, uh, they went on a first date and then like the guy had to leave the date early because his dog was sick. And oh. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, dude. But he was like, yeah, yeah, he keeps like... Um, like you know talking about the dog and like like the dog like keeps getting sick on our dates and i was like oh you're still believing him oh, oh my god <laughs> you know there was a moment was when like, you were saying that where i was like i kind of believe him like i have like canceled engagements to go hang out with my cat so i understand but not every single <laughs> time <laughs> I just love cats that much. I, but maybe like, if if someone is saying every time like I can't because I have to hang out with my dog, like it probably is not true at that. Yeah, point. exactly. Sorry, uh, my dog oh. is filing his taxes tonight, and he has a big project for school tomorrow. Uh, I'm sorry, my dog actually. Um, my dog said that this date is an example of the heteropatriarchy of. Uh, white supremacist hegemony and uh i yeah my dog sorry my that. dog my dog doesn't want to be in an open relationship anymore so <laughs> oh my god the other day oh my god maybe this is rated x but the other day um Do it. i was, I was 
<laughs> for all the people out there. Um, I I uh, was, someone was like talking to me on the dating app and um, we were like thinking of hooking up and he's like getting into like kinky stuff he's into and mine and stuff and it's like getting kind of hot and stuff. He's like, oh, do you like to do like Dom sub stuff? I was like, yeah, I like to do that sometimes. And then he's like getting into like dog stuff. And I'm like, I've like thought about it, you know? It sounds like like doing like a, like wearing like dog collar yeah yeah mm -hmm. and stuff and then he was like no like you know have you done like stuff with dogs <laughs> oh. oh i was like wait you mean like with like literal dogs he was like yeah i haven't done it but like i've seen some videos and i was like why do i why do i attract these people <laughs> And what then you went to me? lunch with him. No, that was a different guy. And then, no, oh my god, different, <laughs> different man. I was like, I, I. He said, so, so we're engaged now, and. <laughs> and I we have, have a beautiful like, dog. <laughs> I should have been like, I'm in love with you. Then he would have blocked me. <laughs> no, because so that's too oh. far in gay culture. Is is oh. being in love. Or having sex with a woman, if you ever do that. That's too far. But oh, I dogs, love your joke about think that. About it. I love your joke about oh, being yeah. a silver star gay. It cracks me up every I single time. I love it time. so much, too. <laughs> it's so true. You're just like a, you're, if you're at the bottom of the totem pole, um, you do that. It's tell like your, you're not pure or something. Tell our listeners what a silver star gay is, if they don't, if they're not. Silver aware. Please, yeah. Well, they probably know what a gold star is. They probably heard that before. It's like it's a it's a gay guy that's never had sex with a woman, um, and so it's this weird reward system where you're rewarded for staying away from vagina. It sounds like kind of misogynistic a little bit. Like mm -hmm. separate the genders. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and a silver um, star is one woman, right? Yeah, it's any, yeah, it's any sexual contact you've ever had, like, you've, then there's, um, because then there's a level up from Gold Star, it's Platinum Gay, and that's where you were C-sectioned out of your mother, so you've never touched a vagina ever in your life. That's how dedicated you were. That's how much of a, of a fussy gay you were. You're like, I'm not, <laughs> I will make the world cater to me right now. I will come out in an unnatural way that might hurt this woman just because of how I'm feeling. That's how much of a fussy fag you're being. <laughs> I, think, I love the idea that the baby is a fussy fag. It's like <laughs> I also like the idea of like a doctor is like somehow does like a scan earlier. I'm like, I can tell your baby is gay. Do you, you want to opt for a C-section? Because I, I think this, this baby would just prefer not to touch any vaginas at all. Yeah. This we baby, can tell and let's, let's do this kid a favor. You know? This baby keeps snapping Thing, and it keeps saying gaga so i think it's gay <laughs> when this baby goes to the fire island pines in 21 years i don't want it to get roasted for coming out of your vagina so let's take it out of one years we're like 17 yeah that's yeah. true Mr. mrs smith i'm sure that knowing that your baby is gay i'm sure you'd want her to be a platinum star gay like we're <laughs> we're no gold star doctors here we're platinum he'll be demoted immediately if he touches a vagina don't want that kind of life for it and i think it's that's Child Crazy. abuse if you give birth naturally, really. Hundred percent. That's homophobia. If you yeah. naturally, you're you're forcing your kid <laughs> to touch a vagina. That is that is homophobia. Yes. And I think that's so weird that like like I'm like like I can't ever like have sex with a woman or like my stature is down. I think that's so dumb, you know. And I'm probably only saying this because I'm not in the club, you know. If that was yeah. a platinum gay, it would be like, you know, boys yeah. will be boys. They can have their thing. Yeah. No, it's interesting. It's yeah, it's like, there is so much crazy gatekeeping around who's bi and who's gay. And it's just like, let people be anything they say they are, you know? There's so yeah. much, like, misogyny and racism in the gay community that they don't talk about ever. Like, right. just because they think just because you like dick, you can be a dick. Or, like, that they're, that they're woke or mm -hmm. something which is like you know like i i saw like a, a profile the other day on grinder that was like not into black guys i yeah. was like i think you mean to say black people 
I think that's <laughs> how you feel, actually. Yeah, and it's like the no fats, no femmes, like... Oh my all, god, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh... No, that's kind of why sometimes I take issue with, like, in queer spaces when they're like, anyone but, like, straight white men can come. It's like, yes, there should be spaces just for queer people, but we are forgetting the fact that queer people can be assholes as well. Like, every time I went to, like, certain spaces and I hear jokes like, uh, like, a top is a gay man who, like, hates his dad, I'd be like, well... Well, actually, that's not a good example because that's kind of funny, but I don't know. It's just like, <laughs> there's just plenty of people who can be really mean and there's gay people who are super transphobic and there's like black people who are super transphobic and like there's... Yeah, like, I have gay. an ex-boyfriend who is like super misogynistic. He was transphobic, like looking back on it now, you know, like homophobia and um, like gay people have tons of internalized homophobia too and don't realize it a lot of the time. Yeah. Yes, that's true. I feel like I've met straight people who are, like, more chill with gay people than some of the gay people I've met, <laughs> you know, mm. and, like, less gatekeepery, too, which is not to say all straight people are good. Not all of anyone are good. Yeah. You know, it's just nuanced no. everything. Joe Exotic, yeah. not a great gay person. <laughs> well, about that, I would just, I, he's not a good moral yeah. person, but he is a great gay person. <laughs> he's a ridiculous no, as, person. He's, he's a great very good at being gay. gay. No, he's amazing at being gay. He converts straight people to be gay. That is amazing gay person. With meth. With meth, he yes. He meth on them, and then they turn I don't judge gay. his methods. I don't judge his methods. <laughs> yes, you're I don't judge his meth kids. We oh. just applaud the result. Oh. Did you do that, say that again, Dan? Lucas? What, sorry? Did you do that intentionally? His methods are meth. Oh, I, I, oh my god, I swear I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. Yeah, do sure, that. sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, right. Lucas actually sprinkled meth on me so I would do this podcast. And... <laughs> it's pixie dust. And it's working. Well, it worked out. <laughs> and it, it worked <laughs> out. It worked out perfectly. Before we get into audience submissions, I want to say, Dan, you reminded me because of your story about this man who loves dogs. Um, I discovered an article a couple of years ago by this random person who remained anonymous for what became obvious reasons, who wrote an article in the cut that was called What It's Like to Date a Horse. And it's all about this, this man's like connection to horses, but he always says, he's like, it's not sexual. I don't feel like I'm raping the horse. I, he genuinely feels like he's in love with his horse. He lets the horse, like, come to him. And he's, like, he makes all these arguments about how, like, what do you mean an animal can't consent? Like, we, you know, like, we milk cows without their consent all the time. We, like, pet dogs without their yeah. consent all the time. I don't think it's good to have sex with horses, but I did think it was an interesting perspective. And this one line really stuck out to me. The interviewer asked, did you experience sexual feelings when you were younger? And he says, I was only seven. I started to notice horses in that way when I was about 11 or 12. Everyone else was stealing their dad's Playboy magazines, but I had a book called The Big Book of the Horse. <laughs> wow. Oh my God. That was, that was a book at the library and he was like what is this just doing lying around where any kid could find it and <laughs> he was like you treating it like playboy yeah he it, was like, there's a big community for these people they call them zoo files and they have like conferences because obviously it's very like um you know oh, animal animal sexuality people yes is animal sexuality people oh my god yeah and he i guess had a therapist who like talked to a couple like once the therapist found out she talked to a couple of her supervisors and then she came back to him and was like well you know I've thought about this and I don't think I really need to like intervene or do anything and he was like of course you don't I'm not sick I'm fine but like I wonder if there's people who try to have sex with octopus oh octopi well, are so an octopus smart. has a beak an octopus has a beak so if you're trying you to fuck the head or something <laughs> Like it's like Jello, you know. Right. Fuck the, like, the, you know that little inkjet? You could probably fuck that. I don't know. There's a documentary that came out about like a man who loves an octopus. They don't have sex. I saw I that. Think. I love octopus. I Is love it good? Octopus. It's so good. It's called My Octopus Teacher. 
And I need to watch that. I saw that on Netflix. I he wanna, does I wanna... like fall. It's like it is really beautiful. He, he like develops like an intimate relationship with the octopus. Because I actually I read a book on octopus called uh, The Soul of an Octopus, and they're like mm. very intelligent creatures. Like they have the emotional intelligence of a five year old, which is a lot for an yeah animal. for an animal for yeah. sure. They yeah, also can they like the throw stuff at you as like a joke. So they have like a bit of a sense of humor as well, which is amazing. Yeah, they like, <laughs> in zoos, they give them puzzles and stuff because like, or otherwise they'll get bored to death. Like literally they'll die of boredom. Like they'll lose the will to live because they are such intellectual creatures. They're like, they're, they recognize you too. They think of you. Yeah. It's like, I love octopus so much. It's a really, if anyone's still like, you know, hibernating in their house, which we will be soon again. Yeah, Please sadly. watch My Octopus Teacher. It is, it will make you believe in love again. Well, yeah. that before sells we get into, me. Before Go we on. get into audience submissions, that did remind me of one small story about octopus that my dad told me, which is that there was an octopus in a zoo that um, what happened was there, it was a, no, it was a, Aquarium, that's it. An aquarium where there is a tank full of fish and they noticed every single night there were fewer and fewer fish. And so what happened was that the octopus memorized the timetables of different guards working in the aquarium. And when there was a blind spot, it would crawl out of the tank, go into the other tank, have some dinner, then crawl back into its own tank. Oh my God, the tricky little bastard. That I know, right? five-year-old brain octopus. Wow. A five year old would do that. Yes, yeah. that's right? so true. That's exactly what I'm just imagining. Like, if, you, if the octopus got caught and the agar would be like, What were you doing? And the octopus would be like, I was getting the fish for you. <laughs> like a five year old. <laughs> were you that's stealing the fish from the fish jar? <laughs> no, you just looked <laughs> hungry. <fish> so. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh. Let's pull up some audience submissions. So Dan, this Indeed. can be part advice. This can be part commentary. Um, I just Great. want, we'll, we'll want to hear what oh you God. think of these. I'm um, looking at the first one. and it's... I'm terrible okay. at giving advice. So I think... It's okay. Okay. This is the first one that we got. <laughs> Here's the tea. My ex-boyfriend cheated on me several times, and I've just found out he is a gay home wrecker now, and he keeps losing friends because he hooks up with their partners. Karma's a bitch. Uh, dump them. Oh, he's ex. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, so it already happened. It's an ex-boyfriend. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, make a blog about it. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, make a blog about write it. A, Track write every a single receipt. worded email. <laughs> Yeah, that person, he's got issues, clearly. Right. Get yeah. the government involved. Why not? I, Just go the full I mile. I was, I was accidentally a homewrecker once. Ooh. I, I didn't Ooh. know until later. Okay. I don't, I don't know if I wrecked the home because I don't know if they ever found out, you know? Okay. But you, but it was someone who lied about being married or with someone, and then, um, and you found yeah. out that they had lied. After to you. we hooked up, after we hooked up, they were like, you know, I risked like a lot to be with you tonight, and I was like, I'm not unpacking this tonight. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not. I I'm tired. I'm drunk. I'm going to sleep. Oh and then I God. found out the next day they had a boyfriend, and was like, holy shit. Oh Goodness wow. Me. I was I was having nightmares. They were gonna be like at my window, like throwing shit at it, like whore. <laughs> That's crazy because it's like, what must it take to want to home wreck multiple times? You know, like if you even mm -hmm. home wreck by accident once, you're like, oh fuck, like I can't believe I did that. I didn't mean to do that. I would have backed off, but like to do it multiple times is like That's a pattern. That's like yeah. a fetish after a while. Well, yeah. people's, fet people's fetishes, they get so... There's a fetish for getting burgled. No, having, like, being stolen stuff from, like, being held at oh, gunpoint yeah. and people steal stuff from you. That's a okay, fetish. Okay, but that's some rich people shit, because that is not a fetish. <laughs> like, I don't want people stealing shit from my... At some point, if I was sexually... That's attracted some rich people, people shit. Stealing <laughs> ...from my house, I would be like, okay, well, I can't afford this fetish anymore because you're stealing <laughs> my items. <laughs> What is this, the bling ring? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh my god. 
so we've landed on don't home wreck, don't steal people's stuff. Okay, next yeah. item. So a friend of mine developed a crush on a girl this summer and had planned to ask her out before lockdown struck over here in the UK. Oh, hello. However, it did. And when he got home after that last day of school, he asked her out over text, but she said no. Aww. For at least a month into lockdown, there was a group FaceTime with him, me, her, and one of our mutual friends every night. So it's, I guess this writer is stuck in a love triangle and the two people who are will, mm. will they, won't they are like in this group FaceTime. There was also a group chat in which she was very flirty with all of us, even the other girl. My friend then mm. finds this audition tape of hers on YouTube and makes a quick comedic edit of it and puts it in the group chat. We all laugh about it and he messages her later to check that she's okay with it. She said yes and that she thought it was really funny. Then a week or so later, she removes herself from the group chat and disappears, blocking him on everything, even going so far as to block his number. She also blocks me on a few things as well. We hear nothing until exam results. Um, when day, oh, exam results day. Okay, the day they get their exam results. When she's really cold towards me and I message her. We then got news that she's not staying on for year 12 at our school and moving to a different one down the road who do you think is in the wrong here i there's so many details in that story i started to get lost <laughs> yeah so I, basically so i think that this girl is just very flippant she's just very flippant sort of uh seems to like go wherever the wind takes her and what what would you say gabby should we try and summarize what's happening first i think yeah, what's happening is yeah. there's a there's a writer who writes in and this writer is friends with a guy and a girl and the guy liked the girl and the girl said no to him um, okay and then i guess they were all in school but they're all and they're all friends they're all, they're friends. all in a big friend yeah. group. yes they're all in a big friend group i guess school shut down because yeah. of lockdown and then so they started communicating solely through facetimes and group chats um mm -hmm. as many of us did and then i guess the guy liking the girl turned out to be kind of incidental to the story because the the heart of yeah. it is that the guy in like this kind of crush on her influenced thing made like a little parody video of the girl on youtube yeah. but it was only but the edit he made was not put on the internet it was just shared in their group chat so it was only contained there it wasn't he didn't put it out into the universe okay. and then he and then he asked her like what she thought of it and she, and she said it was cool and it doesn't seem like he put it on YouTube for everyone to see or anything. So it didn't seem like he was embarrassing her. Yeah. But, um, and then a few weeks or a week or so later, she cut off all communication with everybody in this chat and blocked, especially the guy who had made the video. And then um, the thing is, transferred that, schools. This seems like the only erratic thing she's done to like block. And so considering that's the only erratic thing and she doesn't seem to have a pattern of erratic behavior i would say there's probably something that's happened to her that mm. that no one else knows about yeah and or so we're i missing don't a few details to the story exactly it feels like a little empty right now exactly i think we're missing a lot of details so i would say i don't really have any judgments i would just say like there's there's more to it and there's probably more validity so i think made a yeah, he made a video of her, like, that was, like, based off. Everyone, we had a slight technical difficulty, uh, but we're back, and we're talking about this, um, this young person's uh, submission, and basically, we just think that the people involved in her story are, there's probably a lot other details of why they made the behavior they did, and that we probably just don't know enough. I think yeah. it's the... From, from the very limited bit we got, I think it's that, so this girl was asked out by this guy. She said no, and then he made, like, a video of her that was, like, meant to be funny and sweet. But I think that maybe, sometimes people don't communicate, and they're, like, secretly angry about something, but they don't yeah. tell the other person. They let the resentment, like, fester and fester. And I think yeah. what happened was this girl was maybe bothered by this guy for, like, a really long time and, like, little things that he did, but just never said anything. And then when it came down to, like, this video, she was maybe like, oh, this is fine, this is so funny, but secretly was like, well, this is the last straw, and blocked him on everything, um, being like, ah, oh, he should know that I'm angry with him, but the guy probably had no idea, 
And that makes me like feel like, okay, she's kind of in the wrong because if you're annoyed with someone, you need to communicate. Yeah. Like, you can't just ghost like your friends, you know? You exactly. Have to, you have to tell them what's up. Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, should we move on to uh, another one? Yes, let's do it. All right. I was going to... I was going to go to college once. I was, I was it's okay. This is what it literally says. I was going to once go college time. once. Once upon, <laughs> once upon in time. In the land of Evermore, I was going to go to college. All right. I was going to college once and it started raining very, very heavily. Now, I'm a very sincere person who carries an umbrella at all times. In oh all my caps. God. Yes. I love this. Person. Is this Mary Poppins? <laughs> <laughs> So I opened the time. It was raining in It was raining in England. So I opened it, the umbrella, and um walking nicely. It's six in the morning. <laughs> Just compliment your own walking ability. Guys, Mother Goose is writing in. I love this one so much. So, I opened it and I'm walking nicely. It's six in the morning and two girls ran past me because they didn't have any umbrella and they were literally drenched in rain. So then we finally enter the main college premises and those girls, and those girls, I really don't know their names, were walking ahead of me. Why would and, you? and they had this conversation in the exact same way. Girl one, shit, we should have brought an umbrella. Girl two, <laughs> girl two, are you mad? <laughs> Till this day, I still think about her response at night. Guys, I think someone sent us a letter from 1864, England. And you're reading it off right now. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh wow. The Jane Austen <laughs> fever dream. This is are, are they looking for advice or was that just a story? Like I think it was just a story. A story. I think <laughs> and then girl one went, I can't marry you. You don't fit into the royal lineage. <laughs> Your father doesn't even have a title. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> What on earth is going on around here? Yeah, they a Viscount? What am I, a peasant? <laughs> I was walking rather nicely. Like, so I opened it, and here's the thing it says, and M walking nicely. I think it was a typo. And I am walking nicely. Yeah, I have no idea, though. No idea what's going on. I think on. the moral of the story is everyone should write like this because this yeah, I made want, this me is almost gold. pee myself. Listeners and viewers, write in this style. Please be, be very flowery in your use of words. Yeah. Let's we bring want... back good English like this person. Yeah. I want to walk rather nicely. I yeah. don't. <laughs> but Yeah, I walk I think... okay. I walk Dan, I would say you have great posture, though. You do have good posture, yeah. I'm like crouching over right now. Like I don't have a desk in my room. I'm just like, like literally just like crouching. <laughs> like I'm gonna have back problems. I'm like, you're on my bed right now. Like the computer's yeah. on my bed. I As just we should be. My room. As I've yeah. hoped to be for many a month. As I hope this writer is. God, they're seducing me with their use of words. I think I know, we got right? a couple of UK submissions because there's I, one. To, yeah, definitely I, seems like it. There's one I want to read from the the UK, and then Lucas, Please. should we do our self perception corner? Yes, after? yes, yes, yes. So one okay, more, so. and then self perception. Yeah. Um, hi, meerkats. Here's some drama from the UK for you. Oh, I love this. So two years ago, my mate developed a crush on this girl. Uh, I don't know if you guys know, Lucas probably knows, but I yeah. feel like they say mate in the UK. It means mean, like, friend. Buddy. Yeah, like yeah, friend. Yeah, exactly. Not like um, someone they are producing children with. Yeah. Yeah, not like my Not primal... a procreator. Yeah. <laughs> procreator. Yeah, <a> procreator. <laughs> <laughs> my procreator developed a crush, um, but he very quickly got over her. The following year, I developed a crush on her. I went on in silence for a few months before I told my mate and another one of our friends. We decided a plan for me to ask her out on the last day before Christmas. The day arrived and I screwed it up. I couldn't manage to find her. And when I tried to approach her, a crowd appeared. I asked her out over text when I got home and I sent a message to my mate saying I'd done it. 
three days later, two days before Christmas Eve, I got a reply saying she doesn't want to go out with me and wants oh. to stay friends. Okay, cool. End of story, right? Wrong. The mm. one lesson that me and this girl shared was drama. Okay. And when we got back from Christmas break, it turned out that a screenshot of my message had passed through a group chat of her friends, most of whom were in our class. She told them not to tell anyone, but did they listen? No. The news spread like wildfire and at one point even reached my drama teacher. The girl and I faced down uh, a tough few weeks being what felt like publicly shamed before it became old news and all died down. It's all good now, though, and we're great friends. I don't know what I'd do without her. Okay, that's weirdly inspiring. I don't know why it ended like that. So they bonded so, over drama? Well, they bonded over an, inv a, an invasion of privacy. She put their text conversation out for people to see. Is that what happened? Yes, I think. And to be fair, people send, like, if you've ever asked someone out, it's like, or been asked out, you know, it goes to a group chat of like, oh, this. yeah, you like, know, yeah. But... Everything goes to group chats. But I think the people in the group chats spread it to like other group chats and it became this uh, just group chat exception and the news just basically he asked this girl out and it spread all over everywhere i think oh. we need to see the group chat i think it needs to spread to us so yeah, yeah. listener if you're reading please email two nosy meerkats at gmail.com with yeah, screenshots and receipts we need to know um yeah that's that's it's a hard thing because it's like on the one hand probably you shouldn't just be talking about it if someone asks you out on the other hand yeah. it's just human behavior it's like eating chocolate cake or something but at the same time i'm putting myself in that dude's uh, position and that would be like a nightmare or scenario uh scenario like i'm in high school i'm very bad at flirting and i work up the courage to ask someone out and then that gets like blown up through in multiple circles of friends like that would be when i, I was in high, if exactly that would be like a nightmare scenario for me and i would just i just oh, you know yeah, it's no, it cringy. would suck for sure. It would like, you know, stuff gets out to friends and it feels like you're like being surveilled by the paparazzi or something in high mm. school, you know? Exactly, yeah. And everything in when you're younger just feels like so huge, like it's your entire world. When like a year's yes. time, no one's going to remember it. Everything yeah. Except feels us. so much bigger. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we will remember everything. Except when you submit it to a podcast, then everyone <laughs> yeah. will remember it then it's immortalized forever <laughs> especially at the end of like an hour and a half on podcast that's yeah. when you know yeah so dan we yeah. have this thing that we uh started where we ask people how they think others perceive them and then we say how we actually perceive them oh all right so how do you think you come off to others like how do you perceive yourself mm -hmm. um hot just you know, no, huh? that's yeah. true <laughs> nailed it <laughs> that's all i think about no thoughts it's head empty just hot just adonis <laughs> sunshine on a cloudy day no um no no uh i think i do look like sunshine when i am naked i'm just pale i look like the sun just gleams off of me pretty well mm -hmm. um, nice reflective surface yeah, very. I look like a hairy ghost if I take off my shirt. <laughs> um, yeah, subscribe to get pictures of me. No, um, <laughs> this podcast. Uh, I think only I dance. Off. Yeah. Do you think it, do you think I'm doing a good job deflecting from the question right now? Okay. Great job. Yeah, but we awesome. won't let you. <laughs> no. We're gonna sit um, here all day. <laughs> I won't let me. Uh, I I think I come off as like kind of uptight around people i think um i think people think like i'm thinking a lot which i am i think like i just got like a lot going on not like good things just like like thinking just like too much you know of what's like around me instead of just like being in the moment or something um so which i'm trying to work on more i think that i think people think like they see me and they're like oh it's a little uptight or something hmm. I don't know. yeah um, if I may go first, I think, so I had, I had, only, I 
had met you through like comedy so i had like seen your comedy first so i remember from your like stage presence i saw you as like maybe on the shire side but like witty and like your comedy is like deadpan and it's super like witty and mis- like you do like the misdirections and like you know good observations it's very funny and then i feel like when i finally met you like one-on-one as a person i was like he's like more outgoing and friendly than i expected like i feel like from your stage presence not just like from you know, looking at you or whatever and being like, this man's so hot, he'll never talk to me. But, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, just like, I feel like I, yeah, it's totally inaccessible. But no, I, yeah. I talked to you and I was just like, this is someone who's very easy to have a conversation with, very, very like, accepting. And um, uh, other than that, maybe like, I don't know, you just come across as like, I, I don't actually think you come across as uptight to me. I think you come across as like maybe deadpan, but for the most part, like pretty chill. I feel like I could tell you my deepest, darkest secret and you'd be like, oh, that's fine. Like we all have our stuff. I'm just going to put it in the group message right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to send it to a group chat. They'll send it to their group chats. It'll also, be great. Yeah, then it'll I end up it. on Joe Rogan's podcast. And that. <laughs> Yeah, him, Tim Dillon, and Alex Jones are going to talk yeah. about that story. Exactly. I love to hear Alex Jones weigh in on that person's story. Oh That's the point of view. And be like, what so is like, this? You're what asking is a good girl out when you're younger, and it's going to get around. And... <laughs> Guys, and that's where gay frogs come from. I want you to all stock up on toothpaste right now, because it'll help you defeat coronavirus. <laughs> if it's even real. <laughs> What is a son? <laughs> I have a son. Son, do you deal with shit like this? <laughs> son, what's a TikTok? Is that where uh, the empty <laughs> Trumpers go and tell you to wear a mask like a queer? Is that is that where the Ayn Rand cult is like gathering people for the sacrifice? <laughs> Ayn Rand TikTok. If I'm gonna just Ayn type Rand. in Ayn Rand to TikTok and see what comes up. That is I'm gonna do that later. Um but so going off on what Gabby said, I don't have much else to add other than that. I would say initially that I didn't think you were, a, I would say someone who's very put together. It's also in the way you dress. You're very polished. You're very elegant in the way you dress. Oh, thanks. And, and then, but I would say probably my favorite thing about you is that you're someone who doesn't take yourself too seriously at all. You are someone who's very, very easy to laugh at himself. And that is it's always just easy to be around you because I wouldn't call you uptight at all. I would say someone who's a very healthy sense of humor when it when it's directed at himself, which a lot of people don't have. And I'm something I'm very pleased you have. Wow, that's that means a lot. Just shut up, guys. Go away. Bye. <laughs> yeah, bye. <laughs> Get out of here. Like, it is funny when we we've done this corner we did it the first time we did it was sharia and we were all like crying at the end and every yeah. time someone gave like a self-perception of what they think it was always like no i don't think that about you like i kind of think the opposite so it's funny how our insecurities are so not grounded in reality and so grounded in just mean things people said to us at school you know yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah totally I was super self-conscious of my voice for a very long time because, like, people would, like, say how, like, nasally it is. It sounds like, like, Ray Romano, kind of. <laughs> and, uh, like, a gay, like, if Ray Romano came out or something <laughs> of the closet, um, which that would be quite a story. That would distract us from coronavirus if he could just do that. I would love, like, everybody yeah. loves Raymond, but just like a Wouldn't it be funny if he, super gay version of it. If for just like a day he came out the day afterwards, he was like, yeah, no, it was it was just for the bit. I thought you guys needed that. <laughs> just, <laughs> I thought Going, you guys Ray just needed Romano, me to be gay. so sweet of you. Coming that was like on Twitter gay. when... When just Trump was him. saying, like, I'll kiss all these men, like, I'll kiss all these women just to show them how COVID is, like, not a big deal. Like, I'll kiss all of you right now. And Twitter that, took no. it to, like, did he, he actually? Did. I didn't hear about At a that. rally, oh he was like, I'll God. kiss you all. I'll kiss you all. I'll kiss the ladies in the audience. I'll kiss the men in the audience. So stupid. But then everyone was, like, clowning on him. They were like, Trump bi? Like, Trump is bisexual? And then they were <laughs> photoshopping tweets from Trump that were like, bisexual culture is being bad at math. <laughs> God, that guy really knows how to work, knows how to get attention. 
Oh my God. Love, love him for it. Who couldn't? <laughs> what a glorious bisexual man. <laughs> Thankfully, more than half of America couldn't love him for it. <laughs> oh, I'm so um, happy that, and on that, that, that shit's note, over with. What a better note to end this episode on uh, than with optimism and hope for the future and more bisexuals in the White House. Um, <laughs> more we, bisexual fascists, please. We will put it on our vision boards. <laughs> That's my uh, Instagram bio, bisexual fascist. <laughs> <laughs> bisexual and biphobic and bifascist. <laughs> that sounds like a prog rock band, bisexual fascist. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Well, follow Dan oh. Frank, not Anne Frank. Very, very yes. funny gentleman. And uh, please tune in next week. Hope to see you guys soon. Guys, thank, thank you, you so very, much very for much having me. me. Yes, really thank you for being with us. Thank you for being on. This was a freaking blast. It was, it was so, so much, much fun. fun. Thank you for popping my podcast, Cherry. So we are so happy to have been your first. And Gabby we're just gave me the protection. eyes. She was like, "I'll pop it all day. I'll pop it all day." <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you, so Thank you much. guys. See you next time.